What's up, guys? Eric with Ham Radio Concepts, KJ4YZI. This one should be interesting for everybody on HF Digital Modes. Checking out a new digital mode. Raise your hand if you operate PSK, if you operate RIDI, if you operate JT65 or JT9. I got my hand raised. I don't do too much JT9 or JT65. I have done it a little bit slow, but... The new mode they came out with, uh, courtesy of J uh, K1JT, who developed it, uh, Joe, a new mode called FT8, and they kind of nicknamed it FT8 from the Frank Design, I'm sorry, Frank Taylor Design 8 FSK modulation. So FT8, I've seen it already on the spotter networks on 6 meters, I'm hearing it on 20 and 40, and this is what it sounds like. Now, the very first time I heard that earlier this week, I thought, man, that doesn't sound normally like JT65 or it doesn't sound like uh, MFSK or whatever other ones. But uh, once reading about it, this stuff just came out. So a new mode that is similar to JT65, JT9 for a weak signal. When the propagation is bad, the conditions suck, you can get on this kind of mode and make distant contacts, good contacts, a little... Uh, uh, a little less sensitive than JT65 and 9, but more fast paced. So the JT65 used to be like a full 30 seconds or a full minute and transmit, and this is uh, 15 seconds of transmit uh, and then 15 seconds of receive. So we're going to go ahead and check this out FT8, and maybe you'll see this coming up here in the future at some QRP outings uh, at minimal power. So the, the first most important thing to use any of these modes is to know what software to use. And JT65, JT9, in fact, uh, QRA64, MSK144, and Whisper. You're going to use this program here, including the FT8 we're about to talk about. WSJT-X, WSJTX. This is the software that enables you to do the decoding and transmitting and receiving of these digital modes. Now, when you go to the home the home page here, the link is in the description of the video right below this video. Um, there's versions for Windows, Linux, and Mac. And what you're going to want to do is go down here to the bottom, the candidate release version 1.8.0, release candidate one. This is going to be for the FT8. So you're going to, if you have Windows, click the ex, yeah, executable here. Uh, if you're using a version of a uh, diff, different distro of Linux, they have them here. So once you download this software, just run it like a normal install. It's going to come up with the software. Now, to not be an expert of the software, I'm going to touch on some things. Being a new person myself, show you around the software. And I have two monitors running here, actually three, two of them that I use. So I'm going to have to drag stuff into the screen here to fit it all in. I'm not sure how it's going to lay out on your screen. So the, the software, WSJTX, um, if you're familiar with PSK31 or RIDI, you use a software to show the signals on a waterfall and to show the message, right? Well, this is the software for that. And before we go into it, you want to go up to File, and you're going to want to go to Settings. And the Settings General tab, very first one, you want to put your call sign, your grid square, and based on my collaboration of videos I've watched, researching on pages, brought to you in this video as a summary, I've found that the first three boxes here are normal what's checked. Um, the display distance in miles may not apply to you because you may be in Europe or Canada and want kilometers. Um, blank line between decoding periods makes it for a different display here when it's decoding. Uh, and transmit messages to receive frequency window and I'll get to that in a second. So the three, first three checks here, and then down here in the behavior, you double click on call sets, transmit, enable, and disable transmit after sending 7.3. So what is this big mode we're talking about? To sum it up in the most generic form I can, it is great for contesters, it is great for grid square hunters, it is great for weak signal propag uh, weak signals and poor propagation. I might be using this next field day. I was using PSK on field day. I think between CW and FT8, I might have a little bit of fun. Now, I've described JT65 before as watching paint dry. Um, it's not for everyone. This mode may not be for you, but what I want you to know is 
that it's another option for you that is new, something that you can use with almost guaranteed results when you have a poor antenna or you have poor band conditions, you may be able to use this mode, but it's not a rag chew mode. This is CQ from Whiskey Bravo for Charlie Tango X-Ray right here. And basically, he's going to exchange his call, his grid square, a signal report, and 7-3. And that takes about a minute and a half. So one of the first things you'll notice is this clock here and this date. This clock means everybody should be coordinated on the same time because uh, you have a 15-second transmit, a 15-second decode, and then a 15-second transmit, and then a 15-second decode, and so on. So it takes 15 seconds for me to send CQ, KJ4YZI, Echo Lima 97. If that's what I was transmitting, it would take, right here, 15 seconds to transmit that. At that time, that 15 seconds, the other station, who is 15 seconds apart from me, or opposite of me, is decoding. So he's taking 15 seconds to decode my 15 second transmit of CQ, KJ4YZI, Echo Lima 97. Now... That's because of the way the mode format is. It, it's like not packets, but it's digital data that's very, you know, it takes 15 seconds to transmit that. So um, this bar on the bottom, you'll see drawing is, you know, the seconds out of 15. Now watch what happens when it gets to 15 starts over. Okay, so it's basically like uh, a handoff. My 15 seconds sending to somebody, their 15 seconds decoding at the same time. On the left side here, the band, band activity, this is what's going on, okay? Right now, I'm on 7.074 megahertz. I'm on 40 meters. And if you have rig control, which I do, unfortunately, I can't find my cat cable for my FT450. So here's your frequencies here. And if you had the rig, the rig with the program set up, you can click through it and change frequencies automatically and set the PTT over cat and such. So 7.074. Um, with this, you have a waterfall like you would for something as PSK31 or RIDI or many other ones. This water represent, waterfall represents the entire spectrum here on 7.074. Now, again, not being an expert, uh, th this is the width of the signal. I don't think that's, that's not 400 megahertz. That may be 400 hertz in that frequency window. But bas basically like PSK, you'll see sections here on the waterfall that are transmitted signals. Although you don't see a line, you see sections of decode and transmit. Okay, so looking at this, I can see uh, 15 seconds of transmit, 15 seconds of decode, or decode, 15 seconds of transmit, 15 seconds of decode. Okay, and the signal colors here representing red would, red would be the really strong signals and uh, very faint would be the yellow mixed with blue like this over here might be a real weak signal but the software is automatically calculating the 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 signal strength for you on this um, so if you take the green bar up top here and you click around and you land it on something like this okay similar to what you would do on Ridi or PSK now whatever's right here you see it's popping up in the receive frequency window so now it's decoding on my window here right here in this line because that's where I clicked on. If I clicked in the, the section here in, in nothing, there's not going to be anything decoding. Now, over here on the left, it's showing you everything that's going on, but where I want to decode, I would click on a section right here, okay? And the software is going to decode what's in this section and put it up here. Again, calculating the frequency of tone that he's at, the uh, the signal and the call sign as such green means somebody's calling cq so on the left you can see the green ones it's automatically calculating those are people calling cq so those are what my eyes are attracting to right away looking for somebody calling cq to answer um, by looking at this and double clicking on a call sign it's going to put that call sign in the messages down here. Now, these are like your macros, although your macros are not really nothing more than his call sign, my call sign, my grid, and then he's going to give me his grid, then I'm going to give him my signal report to him, and he's going to give me my, his signal report back to me, and then 7-3, and then I call CQ again, 
and the program has features like auto sequence. So auto sequence checkbox here means it's going to run through these automatically as the time changes. A little automated, yes, um, because it does move pretty quick. I mean, if you were expecting to see his response up here and then calculate that in your head, click on it and go to transmit, you might have missed it by a second. And meaning missing it by a second means you're already losing a bit of data that it's not going to be able to decode. So um, that's why the time is very important. If you start transmitting halfway through the conversation that everybody else is having, you're going to miss half of their conversation. They're going to miss half of yours, and it won't decode. It's not going to show half of it. It just won't decode it. So a lot of information to take in here. I know you're probably going to yell at me because it's a longer video. I'm just trying to explain it to the best in detail. And what I'm going to do here is watch this. Um, I have my radio with the MFJ interface, the... Uh, the MFJ 1204 USB audio interface. So back in the settings here, uh, my audio is set up as the because it's a USB device. The uh, you could use a Signal Link or you can use many other different factors of interfaces here. But I'm using the MFJ one. It does work, just so you know. And uh, you want to make sure your input and output are correct. Your output meaning going to the radio. Your input coming from the radio. And if you're using a custom setup with audio line in and line out and stuff, you're going to have to figure out and show there's plenty of information online how to do that um, your you shouldn't really have to mess with anything else here I'm sure there's a lot of stuff here to do mess with here's your radio uh, rig control tab here so a lot of different things here that you can use including setting it to ham radio deluxe and flex and all kinds of things so what I'm going to do here real quick is I'm going to wait for the next uh, oh and, and to, to explain here you have your your uh, signal level over here, your, I guess that'd be your noise or the signal on the band, um, and adjusting that to with my um, audio interface so that I'm not overdriving the software. So I could turn that down because you don't want to overdrive the software because what will happen is you'll have a, a distorted, uh, distorted signals on the waterfall here. So um, keep in mind that with this software, you're not running 100 watts, okay? I'm set right now to 5 watts. So 5 watts on my high gain vertical. I've seen some guys 10, 15 watts. But sometimes people on JT65 run 1 watt, 5 watts. You don't need a lot of power. Okay? Um, so you, you're, 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 it's not fun at that point, And you're going to blank out the waterfall. And it's just not going to distort the signal. It's just not good. So I chose to respond to K8VE. When I click on his call sign twice it populates in the macros here and then starts the auto sequence so it'll start to send a transmit now right now I should be decoding his response to me which should be my signal report and once that's received it's going to be his signal report that I give to him I see he's still calling CQ so I'm going to call back to him again and it's going to keep responding until it sees it come up in red and it recognizes that his response back to me was successful then it starts the auto sequence but it's kind of like a waiting game because you got 15 seconds to see if this guy is going to respond to you or if he is um, and if we can see what it looks like when he responds it should pop up in red there it is now I'm automatically sequence going back to sending him a Roger and his signal report based on what the, the program figured out so he gave me a never negative 17 which is pretty low but the I'm not an expert on the DB or however they rate the signal on JD, JT 65 and FT8 it's not 59 but I can tell you closer to zero is better so I gave him a negative uh, a negative four now a negative three so his signal is definitely stronger than mine but then it goes back and says uh, now I'm sending him a uh, well let's see waiting for the program to automatically generate a response auto sequence there it goes Okay, so then he gave me Roger, Roger. Uh, that time he gave me a negative 17 again. I gave him a negative 3. Roger, Roger. 
I'm sending a 7-3. He's going to send a 7-3 back. And in the process of a minute and a half, what we just exchanged was call signs, grid squares, and signal report. Now you might say, wow, man, a 17-minute video and a minute and a half of, of transmitting and receiving to get a grid square and a call sign. Well, everybody, I mean, let me tell you what. All these people that are on here, I had to clear the list and start the program over. All these people are doing it. I mean, it's yeah, it's not for everybody. Uh, again, grid square hunters, um, extreme low power QRP, field day, contesting. It's got its purpose. Um, I'll do it some. I, I really want to try it with uh, a couple different QRP rigs with a really, really, you know, small antenna or poor antenna on the worst day and, and just see how efficient the mode is because that's really the idea behind it, not to rag chew but to make contacts. So not being an expert at FT8, uh, I hope you at least learned something from the video. Um, don't hold it against me that it's 18 minutes long. And uh, I encourage you to try it. See see what you think about it. Um, you know, if you haven't done any of the digital modes and you start, if you start on PSK31, that's a little bit easier. Uh, and then you'll kind of understand the difference between this and that. Jumping into this right away, never doing it before is a little more difficult. But uh, a lot of resources out there online on YouTube and watching videos. So uh, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you leave a comment. Let me know. Thumbs up. Like on Facebook. Consider any kind of little small donation to support your channel that you love. And 7-3, uh, more videos on the way from KJ4YZI.